You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. There. Nice and creamy. Anthony? Hi, Aunt Amy. I just knew that was you. What's that in your hand? My jack-in-the-box. Oh, yes. That's such a funny toy. Where's my mother? In the bedroom, lying down. She'll cook the rest of the dinner soon as I'm finished. But I wanted to get this done first. What you making? Well, what do you think? A cake, of course. For my favorite little boy. Is it a good one? Oh, yes. A very good one. Very, very good. I just took it out of the oven a while ago. Chocolate on the inside with little yellow swirls? What else? I know what my Anthony wants. See? Doesn't that smell good? Where's the frosting? Right here in the bowl. It's chocolate, too. I blended in a lot of butter to make sure it's smooth. One hundred times. By hand. Milk chocolate? You bet. We don't like that dark chocolate, do we? Ugh. No, no. Hurry up, Aunt Amy. Don't you worry. It'll be ready in a jiffy. Put the frosting on. Plenty of time for that. Besides, we have to let the cake cool first. Put it on. Now. Oh, I know what you want. You want to lick the bowl. Well, you'll just have to wait. I don't want to wait. Be a good boy now. I am a good boy. I know you are. <laughs> I know that. Of course I do. A very, very good boy. I'll just go ahead and frost it now. Why not? No problem, Anthony. None at all. I want lots on the top. Surely. Lots and lots. See how thick I'm putting it on? Swirls of chocolate butter frosting and all of it for my favorite nephew. There. Some more around the sides. We don't want to forget the sides, do we, Anthony? The sides are good, too. So good. Mmm. Anthony, stop that. Get your finger out of the bowl. Ow! There'll be plenty left for you to lick when I'm finished. When I'm... I mean, when I... You hit me. Oh, I didn't hit you. I barely touched your hand. You're a big boy, aren't you? That hurt. Why, it didn't. I only meant for you to, to wait till I finished frosting the cake. Then I'll give you the entire bowl. All of it. Everything's for you. It always is. You know that, don't you, Anthony? I don't think I like you anymore. Well, I like you. I love you. You're my favorite boy in the whole wide world. I mean it. I really, truly mean it. Come and give your Auntie Amy a kiss. No. Then I'll give you one. I'm going outside now. Yes. Yes, you do that. Go outside and play. Playing is good. Here, take the bowl with you. Anthony? Anthony, come back. Don't you want your frosting? You can have the whole bowl. Everything all right? Oh, Anthony... Nice day, isn't it, Amy? Very nice. Something the matter? No, nothing's the matter, nothing at all. Did... did anything happen? Oh, I... I was just frosting the cake and Anthony couldn't resist tasting it. Oh, who could? I used to love frosting when I was his age, didn't you? It's good, isn't it? So... Good. Why wait? We can go ahead and have the cake now if Anthony wants. It's perfectly fine with me. Now, Amy, why don't you apologize to the boy? You can do that, can't you? Anthony, I'm sorry. Come on back, boy. Anthony, please. Anthony. <laughs> Welcome to Peaksville, Ohio on a hot July afternoon. 
At first glance, you'd think this is a farm like any other. And the little boy, Anthony by name, is like any other little boy. But Peaksville is a place not found on any map. And those fields of wheat and barley, they're not the only crop. Something else grows in Peaksville, and for want of a better term, we'd call it horror. One day, exactly six years ago, a boy was born. And as far as the people are concerned, that's all that matters. There isn't anything else. Because Anthony controls it all. In just a moment, we'll take a closer look at Anthony Fremont and the people in the village and the village itself. A world in which nothing exists except Peaksville. A world Anthony manufactured and which he now rules with absolute power. A nightmare of rare design, located dead center in the Twilight Zone. I'll see he gets it, Amy. Would you? Don't you worry, none. Look, boy. Look what Aunt Amy's got for you. Your own bowl of chocolate frosting. You like chocolate, don't you, Anthony? I know I do. Chocolate's good. I don't like her. <laughs> of course you do. She's your Aunt Amy, and she loves you. You know that. I hate her. Oh, that's a good joke. <laughs> a very good joke. It's all for you, Anthony, all of it. And after you've finished, I'll make some more, if you like. As much as you want. Get away. Oh, now, darling. Don't look at me. What? I don't like you to look at me. Hear that, Amy? Anthony's got a point. Why don't you go back in the house for now, so you can help Agnes cook dinner? Yes. Yes, I'll do that. It's going to be a good dinner, isn't it? I believe it will be, yes. You know, just the way he likes it. Don't you? It'll be delicious, Anthony. You'll see. I told you, don't look at me. She's not... I'll make it so she can't look at me. So she can't look at anything ever again. Watch your step there, Amy. I can't see. What do you mean? <laughs> sure you can. That would be some joke. Just go on inside. The light. That's all I can see. The sun. It's so bright. The sun blazing in the sky. Like white fire all around. Amy? Help me! Please! I can't see! I can't see! Help me! <laughs> it's nothing, Amy. I'll help you up. Sit here in your chair. There you go. That's right. Sit. Sit and rock. You'll feel better real soon, I'm sure. It's good to rock, isn't it? Yes, it's good to sit on the porch and rock. There, there, now. <laughs> Hi there, Bill. Afternoon, Mr. Fremont. I brought the groceries from town. Gee, that was fast. Thank you, Bill. Very thoughtful of you. My pleasure. Howdy, Anthony. Hi, Mr. Soames. Mighty good to see you today. Mighty good. It's such a good day. A real good day, isn't it, Anthony? It's terrible hot, though. Terrible hot. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Uh, no, ma'am. I wouldn't say that at all. It it's fine. Just fine. A real good day all around. <laughs> what are you doing, Anthony? Playing. My. That's real good. Whatever it is. You like it? Sure do. I was just wondering, uh, what you were doing. I made something. By golly, you did. Know what it is? I can't rightly say that I do. Take a guess. Oh, I'm not very good at guessing. Guess. Go on, Bill. You can do that, can't you? Well, uh, now, uh, some kind of animal, is it? It's a gopher with three heads. See? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. He's a real fine one. Uh, I ain't never seen a gopher with three heads before. 
is, I mean, he's alive, huh? It must be, the way he's moving around. He was. I'll make him dead now. I'm tired of playing with him. Be dead, Gopher. You be dead. Now that's real fine, Anthony. That's real fine, uh, what you done. It sure is. Yeah. You made him dead, all right. Uh, uh, look at him laying there. It's good that you done that. Uh, real good. Tell me what it looked like. Well, well, it was like a regular gopher, only more interesting. Was it ugly, though? Oh, I, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't either. I'll bet it was ugly. Grotesque looking. That's the way Anthony likes things. <laughs> oh, what a good joke. <laughs> You'd better bury him now. Okay. Want some help? No, I'll wish him into the cornfield. You do that. Go for, go into the cornfield. Go be in the cornfield. Well, what do you know? Ain't, ain't, ain't that something? What are you doing here anyway? Me? What do you mean, Anthony? Uh, I'm delivering the groceries. Uh, what do you think? Go ahead and do it then. Why, sure. I'm the delivery man. That's me. You better. You don't want me to wish you did, do you? Why, why, no, Anthony. No, I, I don't. But... But what? But I just wanted to say... You do some real fine things. Real fine. Uh, you're, you're, you're a good boy. We all love you. Uh, don't we, Miss Amy? Don't we just love Anthony? Oh, yes. We love him. Everybody loves Anthony. Yes, sir. We sure do love him. Uh, we love that boy. Well, hi, Bill. Mrs. Fremont, uh, how are you? I was just checking the roast in the oven. Got everything we asked for? Pretty much. I have your list here. Uh, let me see. I uh, didn't have any laundry soap. General store is all out of the laundry soap. Well, that's to be expected. Not even bar soap, though, huh? All out of that, too? Oh, we've been out for a year. You know that, Mrs. Fremont. We ain't had no bar soap for over a year, so... I guess nobody has to wash their hands or behind their ears anymore. <laughs> that's right, Bill. That's exactly right. I, I got a couple of cans of soup in there. That's nice, huh? Didn't even know we had them on the shelf. And I remember, Anthony loves tomato soup, doesn't he? So I brought that. How thoughtful. You'll tell him, won't you, Mrs. Fremont? Tell him I brought the tomato soup because I heard he liked it. Tell him I brought it, won't you? Why, of course I will, Bill. I'll tell him. Matter of fact, I'll tell him right now. Oh, no, 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 Mrs. Fremont. You don't have to go to the trouble. I, 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 I got to get going anyway. I got to get back to the store. You don't have to be frightened of him, Bill. He likes you. He told me that several times, how much he liked you. Oh, that's... that's real nice to hear. He's a... he's a clever boy, Mrs. Fremont. That he is. About the cleverest boy I've ever seen. Know what he was doing out there? Making something, I imagine. You got it. Yesterday he made a... some kind of furry animal. I have never seen the likes of it, but he invented it all by himself. Had real sharp teeth, too. Long and sharp. Could have done some real damage. It tried to bite him. I was kind of hoping that it was... Mrs. Fremont! But Anthony wished it into the cornfield. Before it could do him any harm. I gotta be going, Mrs. Fremont. I I'm real glad. I mean, it's real fine that Anthony keeps making these things. Real fine indeed. Yes, ma'am. It's great. See you tonight, won't we, Bill? Tonight? Why, sure, it's TV night tonight. Oh, yeah. Anthony's going to put pictures on the television, and we're going to have a surprise party for Dan Hollis. A real nice surprise party. I'll be there, Mrs. Fremont. You can count on me. Where? What? Nothing. Uh, bye now, Miss Amy. Uh, be sure to say goodbye to your nephew for me. I will. Where's Anthony? I think he went into the barn. Oh, leastways I heard the door open. I keep telling him he shouldn't go in there, but... Amy, why, it's real nice that Anthony goes into the barn. A real good thing. But Agnes, 
Agnes, he isn't even around now. You don't have to say that. But even so, Amy, even so, it's nice that he goes into the barn when he wants to. It's real nice. We mustn't even think anything bad about him, Amy. Do you understand? But he isn't around. Amy, dear, you know as well as I do, sometimes he can... He can hear what we're thinking, no matter where he is. He doesn't even have to hear it with his ears. It's like when you lost your temper. That was only for a second. One second. I know, but look what he did to your eyes. Now you can't even see. So you just think nice things, Amy. Real nice things about how good it is that Anthony's going into the barn to, to do whatever he does in there. And tonight... Tonight we'll have Dan Hollis's birthday party and we'll have a nice time. A very nice time. But it's such a hot day. I hope it cools off tonight. Oh, I wouldn't say it was hot, Amy. It's just right. It's a good day. Don't you think so, too? A real good day. It's you, Agnes. What are you doing? Thought I'd lie down and try to rest before dinner. Oh, that's a good idea. You worked hard today. Always do. Got to get the crops in. Come in, honey, if you want. And close the door. He's still playing outside. Good. That's good. I put Amy to bed in her room. Did you? I had to lead the way. Is there a cane in the house, do you remember? She's going to need one. I'll sure check. I told her to try and take a nap. Good. Jeff. N naps are great this time of day, don't you think? Yes, yes I do. I wanted to talk to you about... Sure, honey. We can talk all you want. Later. I was just going to change my clothes. Why don't you check on the roast while I wash up? How's that sound? All right. I'll do that. And you, you get a little rest, too, if you can. Sounds like a good idea. See you at dinner. Oh. Well, howdy, son. You crept up on me. You look funny. Do I? You need a towel. Well, by gosh, I sure do. I was just about to dry my face. I was looking for you a while ago. What for? Your mama said you was out in the barn. Yep. Did you have fun? I was looking at the cow. Oh, oh. that's good. That's real good, Anthony. That you were looking at the cow. Now, now, you wouldn't be playing any tricks on your dad, would you? Tricks? I, I mean, well, you remember a year ago when we had the pigs? Oh, yeah. And what happened to the pigs? You remember that, too? I turned them into monsters. Oh, <laughs> doggone if you didn't. Real odd-looking things. They were funny. That's it. Real funny looking. <laughs> but good things, Anthony. Real good things. And it's good that you did that. It's real good. Like tonight. Yeah? It's television night. I'm gonna make television for everybody. It'll be real funny. It sure will be. Everybody's looking forward to it, too. Just like they do every week. And then we're gonna have the surprise party for Dan Hollis. It'll be so much fun. <laughs> yeah. I can hardly wait. So, are, are, are you looking for something? Can I get anything for you now, son? Um, no. Don't you want to play some more? I don't like playing alone all the time. Well, I can understand that. No kids came over to play with me today. Is that right? Not a single one. I wanted someone to play with. Well now, Anthony, you remember the last time some children came over? Mm-hmm. The 
the little Fredericks boy and his sister? I had a real good time. Oh, sure you did. Sure you had a good time. And that's great. Great. It's just that... It's just that what? It's just that you wished them into the cornfield when you didn't like the way they played. That's okay. But I hear their mom and dad were real upset. About what? If you if you wish people away like that, pretty soon there won't be no one left. So maybe next week we'll talk to some of the folks about having their children come over. We'll do that, won't we? Talk about it first. Yeah, and when they come over, I can make some of those funny animals. That's fun, isn't it? That's a lot of fun. That's Bill Soames' collie. Is it? Yep, that's the dog that always comes around. Yeah, that does sound like Bill Soames' dog. Not many dogs left now, Anthony. You wish them all away. I didn't like them. They didn't like me. I hate anybody who doesn't like me. But everybody loves you. They love you, son. You're everybody's favorite. I heard somebody think one time. Somebody thought I shouldn't have wished away all the automobiles and things. And the electricity. They said it wasn't good that I did that. Somebody thought it one time. Who? Who thought that? Was it Teddy Reynolds who thought that? He owned the farm up the road. Oh yeah, I remember. He shouldn't have thought those bad thoughts. That's why I made him go on fire. Sure, that was why... That dog, that collie, he doesn't like me. Oh, I don't know about that. He's a bad dog. Well, now, Anthony, did you do something to Bill Soames' dog? <laughs> Guess you must have. He isn't outside anymore. I put him in the cornfield. I'm gonna go out in the yard now. Bye. No, no. Bill Soames' collie was out by the tree just now. I heard him barking and then he just... <laughs> well, why Anthony done that? It was a good thing that Anthony done that, wasn't it, honey? Wasn't it a real good thing? Oh, yes, indeed. It was a real good thing that Anthony did it. Well, I've got to get back and get supper ready. Stay a minute. Ethel's bringing over the candles for Dan's cake. Amy already made it. She got the last box of cane sugar there was to be found. Agnes? The very last box. And Dan hasn't got one single inkling that there's a surprise party for him. Not one. Glad to hear it. And you know how much Dan likes music? Well, last week, Thelma Dunn found a record in her attic. That a fact? Yes, and she's going to give it to him tonight. Isn't that a wonderful surprise? It sure is. A record? Imagine. That's a real nice thing to find. What record is it? Perry Como singing, You Are My Sunshine. Well, what do you know? I always like that tune. How did Thelma happen to find it? Oh, you know, just looking around for new things. Or old things. The ones that are still... still left. Say, who has that picture we found a while back? I kind of liked it. That old clipper ship sailing along. The Smiths. Next week, the Sippiches get it, and they give the Smiths the old McIntyre music box. And we give the Sippiches... I know, I know. That's the way of things now. There's... So little left. But that's okay, isn't it? Everybody keeps a few things for a while, and then they trade off. There's about three books left, and each family... Oh, now, honey. And each family can keep it for a week, and then trade it for something else. Like with the stereoscope the Van Neusens found in their cellar. Or the can of beer that Bill Soames found wedged into an old icebox in the junkyard. I'd better go check on the kitchen. You see, the thing of it is, Anthony, Anthony fixed it so that we're alone in the world. Nothing new ever gets built anymore. Nothing new at all. That's enough. No, it's not nearly enough. Remember six years ago, old Doc Baker, rest his soul, he took one look at Anthony when he was born, and he screamed and dropped him. 
tried to kill him right then and there. He knew. Somehow he knew what Anthony was, and he thought it would have been better if he'd been born dead. But Anthony, my, my son, he whined and let out a cry, and then he'd done this thing. He took his revenge. Oh, didn't he? Please, please, I beg of you, don't. No. And, and, and he, he either destroyed the world and only left this village, or he took the village someplace away from everything. We don't know exactly which, do we? All we know is that we're alone, and there aren't any towns or villages or anything else left except this place. And Anthony, he controls it with his mind. He controls everything. That's right. That little boy in the yard outside. He can make it rain or snow. He can wish people into a grave. Or he can turn them into, into, into anything he wants. That's why you got to keep smiling or laughing. Or you got to mumble something to keep your mind clear. Because Anthony, Anthony can tell what you're thinking. And if it's a bad thought, his mind will snap at you and he'd do most anything. Most anything at all. Please, for the love of God. <laughs> Mom? Dad? All right. All right. <clears throat> but it's good. It's good that it turned out this way, isn't it? It's real good. That's what it is. Really? 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 Good! <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you ladies and gentlemen And especially you kids And now for our next act It's time for Stupid Animal Tricks And here's some film we thought you'd like to see First up is Rocco the Squirrel In Crossing the Road <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Poor Rocco And now The Bird and the BB Gun <laughs> oh my! Will you look at that? What, Ethel? It's just like cartoons, only better. And last but not least, the turtle crossing the street. Well, that's all, folks. And now, time for our next program. <laughs> Welcome, horror fans, to tonight's episode of Scary Nightmares. <laughs> this one's a real killer of a story. <laughs> it's called Pleasant Dreams. Let's watch, shall we? Think I'll go get some fresh air. Shh. Not now, Dan. <laughs> That's all the TV there is. Oh, that was wonderful, Anthony. Wasn't it, everyone? Wasn't Anthony's television wonderful? Yeah, just wonderful. Even better than last week. Yeah, great. It was much better than the old television. Oh, the best yet. You can say that again. You'll have to come around next week. Oh, I will. I will. And now, everyone, is it time? I guess so, honey. The surprise for Dan's birthday. Oh, you shouldn't have done anything. Go ahead, Ethel. Give your hubby the big surprise. All right. Here you go, Dan. I, I wrapped it for you special. What's this? O open it. Yeah, go ahead. Well, if you say so. I hope you like it. What's this, a record? It's Perry Como. A real collector's item, you might say. No kidding. I haven't heard Perry Como in years and years. Such a great crooner. You know what a crooner is, don't you, son? No. It's a singer. Someone who sings the old songs. What a great voice he had. Oh, didn't he? Happy birthday, darling. Happy birthday. <laughs> hey, you better not hug me too hard. I'm holding a priceless object here. You certainly are. Wow. Do you think we could play it? 
You mean right now? I'd love to hear some new music. Well... What I'd like to hear is the first part, just the orchestra part, before Como sings. Would that be all right? I don't like singing. <clears throat> I don't think we'd better, Dan. After all, we don't know where the singing comes in. It would be taking too much of a chance. Better wait till you get home. Put it on the table for now. But we don't have a Victrola at home. That's all right. Better to keep it safe. These old records break so easily. I guess you're right. Of course I am. There. It's good that I can't play it here. And now, I think it's time for Pat Riley to play some piano for us. How about it, Pat? Would you? That's a great idea. Well, then, it'd be my pleasure. Move right in, Anthony, so you can watch him. It's great what he can do with those fingers of his. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Oh, don't be. You play beautifully. Okay, then. Here it goes. Uh, guess I'm out of practice. <laughs> It'd be good if you told me what to play, Anthony. It'd be real good if you tell me what music you like. Just play. Play anything. All right. Um, I'll play um, Night and Day. That's a nice old tune. It sure is. That's always lovely. Yeah, go ahead. What are you doing? What does it look like, having another brandy? You've had enough. Not hardly. Stop it. Leave me alone. Put the glass down. Take your hands. Don't make any noise. I don't like noise when the music is playing. I'll drink to that. Oh, don't worry. I'll clean it up. Go on, Riley. Finish the song. Yes, yes, please. It's so pretty. <laughs> pretty, all right. Dan, please. Please what? I'm not doing anything. No, darling. But... I'm just drinking this peach brandy on my birthday. That's all I'm doing. Please, Dan. For the love of heaven, please don't say anything else. Who's saying anything? I'm not saying anything. I'm listening. Shh. Play, Pat. This is real good brandy. Real good. You people know something? There's only five bottles of real liquor in the whole village. Five. One rye, two scotch, one after-dinner cordial, and this here. And when that's gone, there won't be any left at all. None. Keep playing. Nuts. Nuts! Can't even play my record. Can't even play Perry Como. Don't play that anymore, Pat. That's not what I want you to play. Play this. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me! Dan! Happy... Please, stop! Oh, please, Ethel, be quiet! Dan! <laughs> Ethel, you have to stop now. Happy birthday, dear Danny! Happy birthday to me! Play it, Pat! Play it so I can sing it right, you know? I can't carry a tune unless somebody plays it. I'll do my best. That's enough. I said, that's enough! Go outside for a while, Dan. Get a breath of fresh air. You! You and her, you had them! You had to go have them, didn't you? If there's any fault, it's yours! You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when I am blue. You monster. You dirty little monster. You murderer. Hey, what you thinking, Anthony? You go ahead. You think about me. You think bad thoughts about me. And maybe some man in this room. Some man with guts. Somebody who's sick to death of living in this place and is willing to take a chance. Maybe he'll sneak up behind you and lay something heavy across your skull and end this once and for all. 
You're a bad man. You think that, Anthony. You go ahead. I'm a bad man. Keep thinking that. Somebody get behind him. That's all it takes. Somebody end this now. Pick up a, a bottle or a stick or something, anything, and... You're a very bad man, and you keep thinking bad thoughts about me. But now you can't anymore. You can't even see me. My eyes? Your eyes aren't real. They're like a toy. That's all you are now, a toy jack-in-the-box. Anthony, push it away and push it into the cornfield. We've all looked at it enough. Please, son, push it into the cornfield. All right. That's better. He was a bad man, so I turned him into a clown jack-in-the-box. A clown that still had his face. You shouldn't think bad thoughts either, lady, or I'll do the same thing to you. It's a good thing you did that to Dan. It's a very good thing. Play some more music, Mr. Riley. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was swell. Just swell. A real good thing. I like that song. Come on, Anthony. I'll lift you up so you can sit on the piano. Would you like that? You know something. What's that, Amy? Careful, watch your step. Why don't you sit down again? I kind of liked it a little bit better when there were cities outside. And we could get real television and radio and things like that. Didn't you? Why, Amy, it, it's good for you to say such a thing. Very good, but you must be making a joke. Anthony's television is much better than anything we ever used to get. Oh, yes. It's fine. It's fine. Anthony's are the best shows we've ever had. Look at that, will you? It's snowing outside. Anthony, are you making it snow? Yeah, I'm making it snow. I like snow. So do I. We all do. But that'll kill off half the crops. That's what it'll do, Anthony. And then we won't have anything to harvest or eat. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. But I guess it's good that you're making it snow. It's real good. And tomorrow, tomorrow will be a good day. No matter what. A very, very good day. No profound comment here. No clever words about the human mind and the power of thought or the need to survive. We only wanted to introduce you to one of our favorite citizens, and we do mean favorite. Little Anthony Fremont, age six, who lives in a village called Peaksville, in a place that used to be Ohio. And if by some strange chance you should ever run across him, you'd best think only good thoughts because anything less than that is attempted at your own risk in the Twilight Zone. It's a Good Life, starring Mike Starr with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for the Twilight Zone by Rod Serling from a story by Jerome Bixby. Heard in the cast were Meg Falcon, Frenette Lebo, Christian Stolte, Jeff Lupiton, Doug James, Brooke Sanford, Carl Amari, piano stylings by Daniel Chaka, and introducing Zachary Leipzig as Anthony. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>